the historic Milwaukee Mile in Wisconsin is the site of the next race on the NASCAR Papyrus Racing Series calendar. Your pole sitter is the number 190 Sparkboy Chevrolet of Mike Stackpole, and Joey Haley is starting on his outside, the 108 car. In turn number one, Stackpole is going to clear Haley, as the inside line is preferred at this racetrack. Peter Inglis, that 144 car, started in third, and he's trying to take second place away from Haley as they head down into turn number three. He will be successful at doing so. And on the next lap, he goes for the lead, trying to pass Stackpole. He gets a great run down the front stretch, and will inherit the lead going into turn number one. Joey Haley has found the inside line, and he is now trying to pass Stackpole. He will take the second position. David Gower now left to battle with the 190 car for third. At the other end of the field, Fred Jones started dead last for this race. He crashed on his qualifying lap and therefore started in last. His practice times were not all that good. He was only in the upper 20s in this 27 car field. So if they haven't made some major adjustments to that 86 car following the final practice, he should have a hard time working his way through the field. As we're looking at the rest of the midfield, well, we're looking at the entire field from the top of the grandstands here on the front stretch. Focusing on Richard Young, you can see just how much the field is still side by side with each other. Most everyone back out of the side of the top five is still double file as if the race just started. We're on board Michael Laterza, the 124 car. He goes to the inside of Rick Pantano and makes contact with the 155 car in a three wide situation with Kevin Iannarelli. Fortunately, no incident occurred as a result of that contact. Laterza laid off of Pantano. Joey Haley now going for the lead. He moves to the inside of Peter Inglis, heading into turn number one. And the 108 car uh, pulling ahead, but not quite able to clear Inglis off of turn two. But in turn three, he would clear the 144 car and take the lead. Jordan Lang is up to ninth place now after starting in 15th. And he slows all of a sudden on the front stretch. Dale Clow, not prepared for that, runs into him. Lang spins back up turn one, and somehow everybody misses him. Here's another look at this from the top of the grandstands. The 115 car just slows in the middle of the straightaway. Something clearly wrong with that car, and Michael Laterza and Fred Jones just barely missed the 115 car. They did a great job at avoiding him there. Pit stops occur under yellow. Joey Haley and Peter Inglis come into the pits but Mike Stackpole in third stays out and will inherit the lead. A few other cars not pitting. One pit stop will be required to make it to the end of the race, but this is too early for them to be able to do so. Everyone who's coming in is just trying to make adjustments and get fresh rubber at the same time. Mike Stackpole again leads the field to the restart. Jack Salerno here, he's running in second. He restarted in second, that is but he got stuck on the outside. He wasn't able to get below Richard, or Jordan Lang, excuse me, and he is dropping through the field like a stone. That's just the nature of being on the outside line at this racetrack. He's already outside the top five. Fred Jones was the last car to not pit. He restarted 10th. There you see Joey Haley on the inside going by him, as Haley was the leader before that caution. Haley also gets around the 170 car of Fred Jones' teammate, Kevin Iannarelli as Jones now gets around the 170 car as well. And we got three wide in front of them, Jordan Lang and Jack Salano, and Joey Haley makes contact with the 158, doesn't lay off of him, and they carry each other into the inside wall. Here's another look at this. The 108 pushes up into the 168 and just turns him into the inside. He's going to spin back up turn three, and Chris Gibson runs into him. Joey Haley, what on earth are you thinking? Here's Gibson, and Michael Laterza runs into the 105 car as well. That's the end of the day for Gibson and Laterza, as well as Joey Haley, who for some reason, as we're looking at the aerial shot here, he had the entire straightaway to just turn the wheel to the left, or lift off the throttle, but for whatever reason he decides not to and takes out three cars, including himself. Todd Rail's got a small piece of that as well. 153 car will pit to get that repaired. There you see Jack Salano under this caution, getting his damage repaired in the pits. Only one car, that's the 188 car Greg Hill you see going out right there. Pits that did not pit under the first caution, unless you count Salano as well. So the top seven drivers, with Mike Stackpole leading them, still haven't made their pit stop yet. The pole sitter Stackpole is pulling to the inside. 
Something is wrong with that 190 car. I'm not sure what's going on, but clearly there's a problem with Mike Stackpole's car. He's pulling into the grass and is going to come to rest. Oh, this is a huge shame for Stackpole. He had such a great opportunity. And Steve Myers and Manuel Daskalis run into the parked 190 car. As we're looking on more of the 177, they've just came out of the pits and Steve Myers swerves all the straight away goes down to the inside and heads straight for the 190. Daskalis follows him like a duck right into the 190 car. That's going to take Steve Myers out of the race. I have no idea what they were doing. It looked like Myers and Daskalis might have been playing games with each other like they were angry and failed to notice that the 190 car was sitting right in their path. Well, the long Min, after that little incident, inherits the lead on the restart. Richard Young is right behind him in second, and that's Jake Balkan, the 109 car in third. Young moves to the inside immediately into turn one, hoping that Jordan Lang will go by Min and that he can follow him through to the lead, and that's exactly what's going to happen as Min falls back to second and then loses second place to the 155 car, Rick Pantano. Peter Inglis, who led several laps early on in the race, again. Uh, pitted under that first caution and is now trying to make his way back up towards the front working on David Sweet and Long Min as Min continues to drop through the field like a rock he's lost several positions since the restart and has not been able to find that inside line here's Todd Rails in the 153 car Rails got a small piece of that accident under the lap 13 caution and something goes wrong with him here uh, 153 car will pull it to the apron and come to rest in turn number two. You would get towed back to the pits and would be able to rejoin the race. Not sure what's up with the 153 car there. Rick Pantano now making the move for the lead. He goes to the inside of Richard Young in turn three. And through turn four, the 119 car starts to push wide. And Pantano will clear him for the top spot. Jake Balkin in the 109 car has gotten by the lap car of Jordan Lang. Balkin running in third where he restarted. Balkan has a lot of top five finishes to his credit, but hasn't won a whole lot of races, and I find that rather surprising. Here is Huang Min. He is currently the last car in line. He restarted in the lead, but has lost every single position on track that is left to lose, except for the 153 car, uh, which uh, experienced a problem shortly afterwards. Even Mike Stackpole, who of course was leading during that caution before his car experienced a problem, managed to get by Min. You saw the 148 car trying to take that spot back. As Rick Pantano, the leader, now catches up to Todd Riles, the 153 car. Riles back on track after that mysterious problem that he suffered several laps earlier, going another lap down. Fred Jones is currently running in sixth position, right behind Steve Vandegrift and right in front of his teammate Kevin Iannarelli. The 170 car looks to the inside of the 86 in turn 3 and is going to try to take that 6th position for himself. Jones didn't pit under that first caution and that's how he gained most of the positions that he has. But he's been holding station in the top 10 ever since then and is doing a pretty good job although, again, he's under attack from his teammate the 170 car and David Sweet now going underneath the 86 as Jones runs really wide in turn 2. He's uh, sort of having a problem taking that corner correctly as he's been running wide for the last several laps in a row. Peter Inglis, the 144 car, trying to follow suit. Green flag pit stops begin shortly before lap 40 of this 60 lap race. The top four drivers, Rick Pantano, Richard Young, Jake Balkin, and Kevin Iannarelli hit the pit lane. A lap later, David Sweet and Fred Jones will pit as well. This is going to leave Dale Clow in the lead and Kev or Steve Vandergriff in second place, although Clow now goes to the inside to make his pit stop, handing the lead to the 135 car. Peter Inglis also pits with him, and now you can see the drivers who pit under that second caution going by, not having to make their pit stops yet. Vandergriff comes in the next lap, which will hand the lead to John Masella in the 191 car. Masella, now the first driver on track that did pit under that second caution, so we don't think that he will have to pit again. Talia Anita right behind him in second place, battling with Frank and Typus in the 123 car. These two drivers are trying to chase down Masella for the lead of the race. We don't believe that they have to pit either. A few laps later, and Typus 
goes to the inside of the 111 car on the front stretch and will take the second spot. There's Greg Hill in fourth and George Grimshaw rounding out the top five. John Beattie in sixth place right now. Beattie uh, sort of been a victim of some pretty rotten luck recently, so it's good to see a race finally going his way, running up in sixth and showing what he can do with his Dodge Intrepid. B did not have a very good qualifying effort for this race. He was in one of the last couple of rows of the field, so this must be an especially big morale boost for that 121 team. John Masella now encountering lap traffic in the form of Todd Riles, who is several laps down, and Jordan Lang, who is still one lap down. Masella is into the pit lane, so it looks like that the 191 team is not going to be able to make it on fuel. They're coming into the pits with just under 15 laps to go. Frank Antipas goes into the pit lane a few laps later. Jordan Lang, Greg Hill, and coming out of the pit lane, Masella is able to retain the lead. Some quick pit work on the 191 crew, and some very uh, quick pit work on the 188 car brings him up to third place. Manuel Daskalis is running in the 8th spot right now, but is currently under attack from the 135 car Steve Vandegrift. Daskalis, of course, involved in that really silly incident under the second caution, where he and Steve Myers plowed into the 190 car, which was parked on the apron. Uh, still not sure if there will be a penalty coming their way for their antics. Speaking of the 190 car, here is Mike Stackpole running in 19th place, and one lap down doing a good job with what he's got left, but the day could have been so much better for Stackpole. Peter Inglis was another driver who uh, I suppose could have had a better day. He was running in the lead before the first caution, and his pit strategy just seems to have not quite worked out. I believe he's barely hanging on to a spot in the top 10 right now. There's Rick Pantano right behind him. Pantano led several laps after the restart, and it looks like his pit strategy has not quite worked out for him either. We have uh, sort of a train of cars from the 2nd through 5th positions, led by Frank and Typus in the 123, Greg Hill is 3rd, John Beattie's 4th, and Talia Anita fell back to 5th. Her pit grew very slow today, it appears, as she fell from 3rd to 5th under on pit road. And Typus trying to hold off Greg Hill. Hill has not been up front nearly as often as some of the other drivers in this series, some people have questioned his driving abilities, but he is certainly trying to prove them wrong as he goes to the inside of Antipas in turn one. This is for the second position, and John Masella, you can barely see at the end of the shot there, is got a small gap over these drivers and the 153 car as sort of a buffer. So it might be a little hard to chase down Masella at this point, but these drivers are going to give it all they've got to fight for the second position. Todd Rail is now pulling into the pit lane, so... Masella is now the first car in front of him, but he's got about a second and a half lead at this point, and there's less than five laps to go. The 123 car is doing a great job at holding his own on the outside. He fended off the 188 car as hard as he possibly could, but you have to have a car set up really well to work on the outside here, and it's just not going to work out for Antipas. And now through turn three on the final lap, Antipas still trying to hold off John Beatty for third, but he pushes wide in the corner, Greg Hill finishes second with Beatty third, and Antipas is just going to be able to hold off Anita for the fourth spot. But up ahead of this, it would be smooth sailing for John Masella. The 191 car would round the final turn, come across the line, and take the victory at the Milwaukee Mile. This is the first one of the season for Masella, who won the pole earlier at Mosport, and uh, here we see Frank Antipas on the cooldown lap as the field is heading into the pit lane. Uh, coming off of his fourth place finish, he throws the car into the pit wall and collects Jordan Lang. That was an interesting little bit of brain fade from the 123 car, but nonetheless, his resort the result still stands fourth place for him. Brian Simpson, the most port winner, came home in sixth. George Grimshaw fell back to seventh. David Goward came home in eighth. Another quiet top ten run for Goward. Dale Clow ran 9th, he was running around the lower top 10 all day, and Steve Vandergriff, the 135 car, rounds out the top 10.